Adventures! What's up? Welcome to the Friday stream. You made it through another work week. Congratulations. Some of you are like, I work weekends, you ass. Yo, my bad, but a lot of you made it through the work week. Congratulations. It's going to be a good show today. Hey, look, I don't have gambling on yet. I will turn it on, all of you fiends. So we'll destroy the chat and the stream in just a little bit with some gambling. Okay? So relax. Number two. Let's get this out of the way. Yes. I need a haircut and I still didn't get one, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. And yes, this hat is holding all of my hair. And if I were to take it off, it would be like a giant werewolf unfluffing and going crazy. So yes, that's, that's what's going on. On top of all of that, it's a pretty light news day. But I wanted to take this opportunity... To catch us up on the saga that is, what are they? What are they gonna do with the, the mutants in the MCU? <coughs> I know, <clears throat> but we actually have some cool stuff to get into with regards to that. I want to go back to the first time Feige ever mentions mutants in the MCU, 2019. We'll go over a couple of things that happened since then, and we'll try to make sense of all this. We'll combine it with some rumors that are currently out there, and. Well, basically, Pepe Silva this shit. As, as you do. Save some time for Q&A. We'll also save some time for some call-ins. I'm pulling into the tower. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so let me first let's let's start with me telling you why I didn't get the haircut, okay? Uh look. There's like two feet of snow still where I'm at, okay? And uh we didn't shovel it right away, and by we I mean me. And the thing about it is what happens is um as it gets plowed around, as it gets freezing freaking cold. Let me get the uh, gambling set up while I tell you the story. It's just story time. Um, basically, what happens is it freezes and it hardens and it becomes like ice snow instead of snow. Like, for instance, uh, the dogs, they loved it when it was just feet of powder and they were jumping around in it and playing and all that. Now it's like frozen over and they're like walking on it all sensitively. They don't even really like being out there as much anymore because it's just solid frozen snow and so i had to shovel it out so that we could get the car out so i could go get like okay full disclosure i'm gonna i'm gonna we're gonna go super super real talk and by the way gambling just got put on super real talk i wasn't even gonna share this but i'll tell you here's the honest to god truth okay don't tell anybody about this and shut your mouth when you're talking to me i had uh no shovel, okay? No shovel. You know, we, we moved in earlier in the year. No shovel here. On top of that, no gloves, okay? Yes, I fucked up. Okay, what do you want me to say? No gloves, no shovel, no no salt, okay? And what I had to do was use a combination of a dustpan and my trash can and wool socks on my hands, yeah, 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 yeah. So I had to fucking, I know, I know, I know. So I had to like heave my garbage pan into the fucking ice snow to get the shit out of there. Then like I finally got enough of it out so that I could get the car out. And so I drive and I get a shovel. I got two shovels actually. I got a metal shovel because again, it's solid fucking ice. And then uh, one of those like shove shit out of the way shovels, you know? Um, and salt and gloves and all these different things. So then like, I make it back and I've got to shovel again for reals to be able to get the car back into the driveway. Okay. And uh, 
I'll tell you, my back today and my legs, like it, my back and my legs and my knees. Good God, y'all. Sore AF. Okay. And that took hours yesterday. That took hours yesterday. And you guys know, what do I usually do? I'm Jabba Josh. Jabba Josh. I just lay around and do YouTube videos. I just lay around and make content. I don't do things anymore, okay? And so, working this mortal body out in the IRL tundra. Holy shit. Holy shit. It really got me. It really got me, man. I was like, damn. I got to get back into the gym. Otherwise, I'm not even going to be able to do like stuff like this. Like when life comes around and, and, and hits you, I'm just going to be like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm useless. I make, I do YouTube videos. That's all I do. That's all. What? I, I stream. I'm a streamer. And they'll be like, get the fuck out of here. We can't use you then. You know, like if this shit goes to uh, like if the grid falls apart and all that. Look out. OK, Luke Helm, welcome. You are a nerd venture now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, one more little thing I want to say, and I want to bitch about one more thing before we talk mutants, okay? One more thing. Calm down. You're going to be fine. It's going to be all right, everybody. Uh, also, you may notice, you, you probably won't even notice, but I'm going to bring it up anyway because it's bugging me. Okay? Um, the green screen in here. What am I talking about? Of course, we're just regularly in... Uh, Nerdvengers Tower, but back home, you know, back home, there's a green screen that I have, uh, and I make when I make videos. Okay, and usually, um, I, I have one that's screwed into the ceiling that I can pull down like a projector, like like what like a map back in the day in school. I don't know what they do in school these days, uh, but back in the day, we had things that you pull down to be a big map of the world, and we'd be like, "Whoa, the world, that's crazy." So I have one of those, but green screen. And last night, I'm like shooting some videos we're getting ready to record some stuff and the freaking thing falls out of the ceiling okay so we're on my backup green screen today you guys probably can't even tell but i tell you what the one thing is my wingspan it's so shrunk down like that's my wingspan like normally i like to be able to like you know talk with my hands now i'm like so anyway Look, we're on the struggle bus. Sometimes sometimes you get on the struggle bus now. Everybody, shut up. <clears throat> okay, let's talk mutants. I think, here's what I think. You, you guys want to know what I think? Do you want to know what I think? Here's what I think. I think mutants and X-Men are going to be the biggest thing that ever happens uh, to the MCU. I think... It is the thing that Kevin Feige is most excited about. I think it is what many Marvel fans are most excited about. And I especially think like comic book fans and a, and a very large amount of comic book fans out there are it's mutants. Maybe if you're a normie, you don't quite recognize why. Maybe you don't understand why. And that's probably because the mutants themselves, like here's here's sort of my take on it, and I'll TLDR this whole thing here real quick. The mutants were far and away the most sold comic books that Marvel had in the 90s. And to an absurd degree, like crazy degree. Like I think at one time they were selling about a million... Uh, mutants, uh, X Men books a month. I believe it's near that. I, that could be a slight exaggeration, but I think it's pretty close to that number. Somebody check me. Trev will be able to check me out on this. And nowadays, just so everybody knows, like selling a hundred thousand, selling three hundred thousand is considered a great success. It's crazy. Like comic book industry, pretty diminished. Um, yeah. So the. The X-Men used to just sell that many books. And and I personally think that one of the reasons why this happened was that the X-Men and the mutants themselves were sort of a perfect blend. It, it, it sort of had this crazy perfect blend of all these different creators over there. But, of course, Chris Claremont's big run on X-Men 
I think served to bring in a lot of like just overall comic book fans and casual comic book fans to the material because it's really, in my opinion, soap opera, but in the best way possible, in the best way possible. It really delves into the different characters. It, it, it really pulls uh, at these different tropes and a lot of like interesting stuff going back and forth uh, between the characters. But it also has the element that most comic book fans love. That's bombastic fun, crazy powers, visually stunning things to look at on the page. And so the X-Men was sort of a perfect combination of things. Now, the reason that I think a lot of more modern comic book fans, comic book fans of a more modern sensibility, might not recognize that is because after they sold the license to Fox, which they absolutely did because they were uh, bankrupt. Marvel Comics, it, really weird stuff happens. We can TLDR this. Essentially what happens is comic book industry falls prey to uh, ridiculous overprinting of all kinds of collective stuff. They're, they're targeting collectors, but over uh, printing, making no value, bubble busts. People get really pissed, dis, uh, like disengage from the X-Men franchise. Um, this creates um, a situation where Marvel's essentially bankrupt, like legitimately. Two things sort of solve their problems. Number one, they sell off the license to their most popular characters. I think this is a really important point to make. To their most popular characters in order to not go under. The most popular characters, as I just said, were the X-Men. The X-Men was all the rage. Like, you know, look at how well the 90s X-Men, um, you know, cartoon did. This was sort of at peak uh, mutant uh, supremacy. Um, look at how well those crazy mutant comic book cards went for. I mean, you had entire sets of Marvel cards basically dedicated to the mutants, you know, to the X-Men. And uh, all of that stuff just sort of, it, it created this crazy frenzy for X-Men. So they sell the license to Fox. But then, kind of what happens, and a lot of comic book fans talked about this. I rem Dude, Ryan, you in here? Ryan H., you in here, dog? Hey, you in here, dog? Hey, dog, you in here, bro? Hey, bro, hey, bro, bro. Bro, bro, you in here, bro? Hey, bro, bro. You in here, bro? Let me tell you a thing. Thank you for the VV reminder. I'll probably still forget. Okay. So, when Ryan and I were at uh, New York Comic Con in 2019, I just want to show you guys how ingrained this theory and belief is. When Ryan and I were there, we were at the X-Men panel. This is 2019. The new X-Men panel. Jonathan Hickman shit had just come out. It was blowing up, son. People were loving the X-Men. The X-Men were on a big, big rise. We had a whole panel for X-Men comics at New York Comic Con. Incredible, right? We're in there, and one of the first dudes that did the Q&A, the open mic type shit, he literally asks the question that we all want to ask. And the question that we all want asked is, now that Marvel Studios has the rights to the X-Men back, will we see more focus on the X-Men? And were you guys sort of hiding the X-Men or going away from the X-Men because of the Fox arrangement? And, you know, C.B. Sabalski and, like, a lot of the people that were there, they sort of say, like, hey, we've heard that rumor before. That's not true. We've always loved the X-Men. We're, we're down with X-Men. But let's be fucking real about this shit they absolutely sort of diminished didn't really lean into you know however you want to say it. they didn't go ham on x-men or mutants partially because at one point especially after the advent of the marvel cinematic universe why would they make product and make cool stuff to hype up stuff that would probably help those movies of which they had no stake in of which they really weren't making anything from and you may feel whatever way you feel about that maybe you think it's overblown or whatever it was big enough that a lot of comic book fans believed this and look i'll just tell you from my perspective one thing one little thing about it i loved um the hero clicks the game hero clicks and I will just tell you that there's a, there was just a crazy disproportionate level of love for Avengers and other Marvel sides of stuff rather than X-Men uh, for quite some time in, in HeroClix. And, and a lot of people just thought, yeah, that's because 
the Marvel movies and they don't have X-Men and they're not going to pump that shit up, right? And so that's probably why some more modern comic book fans or just sort of normies or casuals out there are are like, "Wait, what? Like why is why the the X-Men? Really? The X-Men mutants?" Yeah, bro, the answer is fucking yes. The X-Men are massive. They're huge. Feige's favorite shit. It's going to be really, really exciting. So, that's the start point. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to look at, and I just need to get this thing pulled up here. So, hold up. Hold up for just a second here. Hold up. Okay. We're going to take a little journey. Back in time. First, we're going to turn this beat up a little bit. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a little trip. Take, it, take a little journey. Let's listen to and recall. Pause that dope beep for a second. <sighs> so good. Let's take a take a journey back in time and see the first time ever that Mr. Kevin Feige mentioned the mutants in the context of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Here we go. We didn't get a chance to talk about today. We, we didn't even mention they were making Black Panther 2. <laughs> Come up. We didn't. We didn't mention the fact that Guardians of the Galaxy Three is coming. We didn't have time to talk about Captain Marvel Two. By the way, I didn't even have time to talk about the Fantastic Four. And there's, and there's, and there's, there's no time left to talk about mutants and how mutants. Are going to be but you know what? All that stuff's been rumored. You've heard about rumors. But I want to leave you today with one more thing. Something that's not rumored. That I don't think has been rumored about. Yeah. Okay, so again, just think about what just transpired here, okay? And I want to take you back to sort of my feelings about uh, 2019. How many of you here were here? How many of you guys were chilling with the channel around 2019? I think we were doing streams maybe on the main channel, actually, about, um, this was a pre Den and Nerds Live, but I think we were doing streams on the main channel to talk about some of this stuff. No, actually, I think it was right around that time when we were doing Den and Nerds Live. Regardless, um, I had a theory back then, one that I can test to this day still has merit, and that is that... This is not the Phase 4 announcement that Feige was originally going to make. And that there's a lot of stuff that they sort of left off of this announcement. And I think a lot of that had to do with Sony pulling back on uh, Tom Holland, etc., etc. And uh, kind of leaving them in a weird spot. But if you look at what he says at the end here, he mentions all these dope things. A lot of them, I think, yes... Those are things that were likely to, to be on this slate, but got thrown into, you know, confusion land because of Sony. Um, but what does he talk about right at the end? He talks about Fantastic Four. It gets this massive pop. But the very last thing he talks about before he brings up Mahershala Ali, which was sick. And yeah, nobody had that rumored and Blade, let's go. It's the mutants. He saves the mutants for last. The very last thing that he teases out there is the mutants. And again, I just wanted to establish, like, why and why that's so important. Now, after this, he spoke to the press. Some people shared my belief that uh, there was there could have been maybe more. Uh, maybe there was maybe there was more. Maybe Feige had more to say, but he didn't say it for whatever reason. Let's uh, let's watch this interview here. We just announced a massive suite of movies. We're so excited, but I want to make sure we're accurate. Are these the only movies you're con or, and TV shows you're considering being in Phase Four? And if so, what you was? Wanted more? No, well, I'll wait. Well, I'm curious. The decision not to have an Avengers titled movie within your next phase. Why did you go that route? We had a movie this year called Avengers Endgame, and uh, 
we wanted, and it is, excuse me, <clears throat> very much an ending, as you saw, to so many of those characters. Uh, so phase four is about beginnings. And phase four is about learning new things about characters you already think you know, like Black Widow, meeting incredible new characters like the Eternals and Shang-Chi, going on new adventures with, uh, with uh, Doctor Strange uh, and Thor. Get that Fantastic Four guy out of the frame! Get out of the frame! Promise, Love that shit. Uh, will be spectacular and not what anybody's expecting. I know, you know, you you did mention other movies in addition to the 11 that you titled up on screen, and you name-dropped Fantastic Four, but you only referred to the X-Men as, quote, mutants. And I'm curious, are you guys not looking to go the route of a traditional X-Men titled uh, movie for those uh, characters? Mm. I was, uh, mutants and X-Men are interchangeable. I just Are they, though? Said I just said mutants. Um, but yes, whatever we do will be quite different than what's been done before. And I also want to ask super quickly, uh, why Blade now? And and you named other movies in addition to the 11 that you titled up on screen and you named dropped Fantastic Four but you only referred to the X-Men as quote mutants and I'm curious are you guys not looking to go the route of a traditional X-Men titled uh, movie for those uh, characters? I, I was uh, mutants and X-Men are interchangeable I just said I just said mutants and X-Men are interchangeable mutants um, but yes, whatever we do will be quite different than what whatever we do will be quite different than whatever was done before okay so Actually, if you go back and watch what he said before, we're not going to like fully go into it again, but he actually says the mutants. We didn't have time to talk about the mutants. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to the next little piece of information that we got with regards to Feige's plans for X-Men and mutants. And it's a little exclusive that some of you have seen, maybe some of you have not. Um, but it's this article here. This was an exclusive posted in 2021, back in May, wait, March of 2021. It says here, and this is the Illuminati, Illuminati, great sources, very reliable. Chet, what's going on with that music, bud? Just. <laughs> so this was uh, Illuminati. Good. They're good. Marvel Studios is currently developing a X-Men based feature film tentatively titled The Mutants. Tentatively titled The Mutants. And then in 2019, Feige says, we don't have, we didn't even have time to talk about The Mutants. Do you think that's a coincidence? You think, do you think I'm going a little too Pepe Silva on this right here? I'd like to pull this. I'd, I'd like to. <gasps> Vivi in two minutes, oh my god. By the way, how about the markets, huh? How about those markets? Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, shitty, I think is the word. Okay, we'll try that in about a minute. Let's do a poll. End this one, let's end this one. We'll get this one going in a second. The main question here is, do you think Feige knew or had the mutants planned in 2019 boom 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 now i i kind of want to like maybe for some of you this is going to be a little fuzzy uh because like you're just kind of getting into the nerddom or whatever but you got to remember here here's something that's very important to remember as you're thinking about this poll this fox merger did not come out of nowhere it had been on the table for over a year, maybe even as long as two years. It was a possibility sort of being talked about. Uh, and so Feige, even though, you know, he might say, uh, you know, we had no idea. Hey, I got one. How about that? How about that? I haven't got a, I ain't got a VV uh, drop there in the dash, gosh dang minute. And I got one. Cool. Boom. 
Just give me like a big fat ultra rare or something, baby. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The market is uh, is is like a a baby diaper being set on fire and put into a toxic waste bin that then gets launched into a volcano that's on a moon that it's exploding next to a planet that Galactus is eating. It's real fucking bad. Okay. But anyways, let's focus. Let's focus on the task at hand. My personal belief here is that they already had a plan. He already had an idea. And <laughs> here's, you know what? Another sort of reason why I believe this. And I guess I'm just curious as to uh, if you guys are feeling this or not. I'll look at the, the thing in a second here. Y'all remember that uh, there was a deleted post credit scene for Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1. Where Nick Fury is talking about Spider-Man and the mutants. Do you guys remember? Put a one into the chat if you've seen that uh, deleted scene. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Iron Man deleted scene. Spider-Man. Out of that vault that we said, we'll never show this to anybody. Put it away. We're bringing them out. We're putting them on this disc. And I'm about to show you a deleted scene that has never been seen by anyone before right now. Thank you again so much and enjoy. As if gamma accidents, radioactive bug bites, and assorted mutants weren't enough. I have to deal with a spoiled brat who doesn't play well with others and wants to keep all his toys to himself. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Well, what are we... That's ice cold. First of all, that line should have just been in there. Fuck you, Fox, and fuck you, Sony, for taking this long to allow our dreams to have. Okay, anyway. Out of that vault that we said on this disc, and I'm about to show you a deleted scene that has never been seen by anyone before right now. Thank you again so much, and enjoy. As if gamma accidents, radioactive bug bites, and assorted mutants weren't enough. An assorted mutants. I have to deal with a spoiled brat who doesn't play well with others and wants to keep all his toys to himself. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Pretty dope. So, I only bring that up because... This was fucking Iron Man 1, dude. Like, Feige had mutants on the brain, Spider-Man on the brain, and he's a comic book sweaty. That's why he's so good at what he does. But I just say all of that to say that I strongly feel that even back then, they had plans of what they would do when and if they got the mutants back. You know what I mean? So, a couple other things to go over here. This, the mutants project. Let's, let's continue on to talk about this. Um... The Illuminati Nerdy has learned of a Marvel Studios-led project produced by Marvel CCO Kevin Feige entitled The Mutants. It's currently being developed as a feature film and is intended to be a reboot of the X-Men franchise. Uh, after over a dozen movies produced by Fox, Marvel Comics Mutants are finally taking their rightful place on the screen of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Blah, 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 blah. Feige has only mentioned the mutants in passing over the past couple of years since the Fox Disney merger. Although their inclusion in the MCU uh, was always assumed to happen, nothing official has been put out into the world until now. The Illuminati are also are so excited to be able to share this information with you, and we hope to have the opportunity to update on you. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So since then, a lot of people have corroborated this rumor from the Illuminati. In fact, this is the most recent stuff right here, which was shared just a couple of days ago actually like five days ago i guess this is from the middleman one of these crazy insider scoopers who is it who are they what are they doing what do they know what's what's going on marvel studios is currently looking a director for probably the other way around but you you feel me you understand the first mcu mutant film i guess we're getting close to an official announcement 
The above tweet compliments these tweets. As far as I know, they are still looking and none has been defined yet. Here's what he said in September of 2021. I had recently, or I heard recently, that they are already considering and selecting director names for the first mutant film in the MCU, and that Kevin Feige is more excited for their arrival to the universe than anything else. Sort of going along with, lining up with, if you will, everything we've been talking about. Now, let's shift into the first actual announcement that we have this year about an official X-Men project. As a part of the Disney Plus Day celebration, Star Wars did nothing, but Marvel officially announced X-Men 97, a new sequel series to the beloved 1990 superhero cartoon X-Men animated series. While little is known about the project, it promises to give both longtime and casual X-Men fans alike plenty of fun mutant mayhem and may offer some insight into how Marvel plans on approaching the groups. Now, this is the first official thing that we have coming out for, for mutants and for X-Men. It's clearly a different universe than the MCU. Otherwise, like, where are these characters been, right? But this brings us to the Doctor Strange 2 rumors. And it, I am going to talk about the Doctor Strange rumors and how all of this could work together. I want to talk about three distinct possibilities for what's happening with the mutants in the MCU. Okay? In fact... As I'm talking about the Doctor Strange rumors, let me put another poll up because I I, I kind of want to get where or see where you guys are at with this. What in the actual frick is going on here? What? Chet, you are killing me. Busting my balls, Chet. Busting my balls. Thanks a lot. Thanks for nothing. Jeez. Okay, so let's talk Doctor Strange. Actually, you know what? Okay. Wow, 82% say yes. 82% of you believe Feige had that shit planned out even back in 2019. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Next question. And I think this is kind of central to what we're going to talk about from here. Is Wanda in our universe a mutant? What do you think? What do you think? This is pretty important to the possibilities of where we go from here, right? Is she a mutant? You know, this was actually another thing that I thought might come up in WandaVision, but definitely didn't, uh, was her whole mutant background, the possibility of her being a mutant. They, like, kind of play around with this idea that maybe Sokovia was experimenting on certain people because they had a, uh, an anomaly in their genes. We all thought maybe in Eternals we'll get some kind of explanation for this, you know? The X gene being established as the Inhumans are experimented on. That turned out to be wildly different than what they did in the comics, and the Inhumans could have maybe experimented on humans, but it, we didn't really see anything like that. You know? We have um, Alpha Major, right? The big old bear dude. Or what's the dude's name? I forget his name. Um, we have that dude in Black Widow, but no mention of mutants, no real, like, him not freaking out or doing the bear thing. There were some people that thought maybe he was actually going to legitimately transform in the film or whatever, right? So I think there's there's two ma Ursa Major, right? There's two main possibilities here, and then there's one option that's kind of in the middle. Okay? Option number one, the mutants don't currently exist in the MCU. There are all sorts of possibilities as to why. We'll get into it. We'll talk about it. But maybe the mutants simply don't exist in the MCU. Meaning, if there are mutants, there's only a few of them. There's no big-time mutant thing happening. 
Charles Xavier does not have the school for the gifted. None of that stuff happened. None of that stuff exists. And it's yet to come in the MCU. That's the first possibility. The second possibility is that they are here. And much like other things in the MCU, they exist. We just didn't know about it. Atlantis exists in the MCU. We probably just didn't know about it. You know what I mean? So, if that's the case, and uh, I, I don't know. I'm starting to sort of lean in that direction. If that is the case, I wonder then if it will be connected to... Wanda, if it will be connected to, you know, an actual Charles Xavier, and if that Charles Xavier will pop up and explain what is going on. Okay? So, as far as we know it, let's go back to Doctor Strange for just a second. As far as we know it, we're going to get some mutants in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. The big rumor, of course, is Professor Xavier. The big rumor attached to that is that it's going to be Sir Patrick Stewart playing Charles Xavier. Now, as far as we know, it doesn't seem like he's going to play the actual guy he played in the Fox films and instead is a variant. Some people think, going back to X-Men 97, that that'll be Charles Xavier from the 90s X-Men cartoon. And what would be brilliant about that, you get 97 that continues that story that maybe then connects to Doctor Strange. Mind-blowing stuff. That would be crazy. Okay? There actually were some rumors that James McAvoy could be Charles Xavier in that movie, maybe on top of Patrick Stewart. And before you say, oh, dude, that's too crazy, they literally did that in an X-Men movie. Days of Future Past has uh, McAvoy being young Charles, and there's Patrick Stewart in that movie as older Charles. And, like, we're deep into speculative territory here, but if you look at what's going on with the, the Netflix characters and even some of the fun that was in Spider-Man, I think it's totally possible that you could have multiple Charles Xavier's in that movie. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying it's possible. It doesn't necessarily sound all that crazy to me, right? There are rumors that other mutants are also going to be in this movie. Magneto's a big rumor. Wolverine's a big rumor. Right? There's there's rumors that even other Fox X-Men characters, nothing official on the boner, but please, God, bring in the boner. Close the book on the boner and allow him to actually be Quicksilver. That's a, I want that to actually be Pietro. Come on. Right? And so, like, I've been sort of thinking about this. I was like, man, like, what's the deal here? What's the deal? Well, let's, you know what? Let's put a poll up. I want to, I want to know what you guys think. Let's get a poll here. 70% of you believe that the Wanda in our universe is a mutant. That's really, really interesting. So maybe that sort of predicts how you'll answer this poll as well. Darth. Cryptos, welcome to the Nerd Venture. You are are a Nerd Venture now. What's going on? I can't speak today. You're a Nerd Venture now. <laughs> Dark Cryptos, welcome. Maybe this. Maybe we already know here, but let's just say. Let's let's just see. What do you think they'll do? with mutants in the MCU main universe. They are already here. They are not, oh, what the? Not here. Meaning there's no uh, X-Men. That doesn't ha exist yet. In fact, I'll put yet. They're not here yet. Boom. Let me know. I want to know what you guys think about that. So, a couple of big possibilities here. I want to talk about one of my favorite theories. I'm actually going to do a full-on video about this because I think it's so fun and I want to talk about how it's possible. But one of the possibilities that I saw out there is that they may do a Harry Potter-esque thing with the mutants. 
And what I mean by that is like, if you think about Harry Potter, the wizards exist. There's a whole wizarding world, but most of the humans, most of the muggles, most of the normal folk and everyday society on earth does not actually know about them. They exist pretty much isolated from the rest of the world, kept secret as to protect their own society and the society of humans. And because the mutants have magic users, telepaths that are incredibly strong, like um, Charles himself, especially if he uses Cerebro, Jean Grey, etc., etc., it's technically possible that the mutants in our universe exist like the wizards did in Harry Potter. That would be crazy. Okay? And it's possible. And some of the things that we hear, like the fact that they want to call this movie The Mutants, kind of seems and feels like it, that could line up with that kind of a concept, right? That would be pretty crazy. And uh, I, I'd kind of be into it. They would, uh, they would obviously have to change some things up here and there. But I could even see them doing this and like having James McAvoy be Professor Xavier we go back and get stories of some of the stuff the X-Men did that just plainly nobody knows about. And it also sets up the possibility moving forward in a post-Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness world where Steven could be like, okay, I gotta go find Professor Xavier. So imagine, if you will, totally speculative, but also if this happens, you all owe me, owe me a, a buffalo nickel. What if the post credit scene after Multiverse of Madness has Stephen Strange rolling up to Xavier's School for the Gifted? And he meets our Xavier, who has always been operating, but operating maybe just as a, uh, you know, a regular do uh, dude, a dude that has a school. It's all Gucci, man. No mutants here. What's a mutant? What's that? You know what I mean? Like, would that not be some straight fire, dude? be, be freaking awesome there's also a possibility on the other end this is a big rumor that's out there that maybe Wanda does a reverse house of M and brings mutants into our universe now this could be maybe the variant X-Men that we meet coming in or it could be like creating all of these mutants in the here and now you know what I mean but, like, the more I was thinking about it, the more I was like, I don't know if that plays. I don't know if that works. Like, I don't know if we can do mutants, like, just now. Like, Charles and all these mutants are just now emerging. Like, we used to think, oh, man, you know, maybe the stones, the snap, whatever happened in Endgame, maybe that created all the mutants. Now all the mutations are going to start happening. Maybe. Or maybe mutants are just there already, hidden in the shadows. They've already been around, but it's like that Harry Potter kind of thing, you know? I don't know. I don't know, man. I think that Multiverse of Madness is going to do a great job of establishing a lot of X-Men fun, having a lot of fun with the X-Men in the here and now. And with Feige just loving the X-Men the way that he does... I think you're going to get the fact that they were here. We didn't know about it. It was being hidden from us. Only top level people even considered it or had it as a possibility. Maybe we just thought of them as enhanced and we didn't realize that this was a big growing population of, you know, mutated humans. And there's that rumor, you know, from uh, Nick Santos over on the hashtag show. I really don't know how reliable this particular rumor is that he had but that we would be getting a mutant, or rather an X-Men show that's an anthology show, taking us back through all that kind of stuff, you know? I don't know. It's exciting. It's fun stuff, and we don't, we don't fully know how it's all going to fit together, but it's definitely coming. It's definitely a huge deal. Feige absolutely loves the mutants. Marvel fans absolutely love the mutants. The possibilities are crazy, especially with the multiverse and stuff like that. We're getting X-Men 97. We're getting mutants in Doctor Strange. And we're very likely 
to be at, probably at San Diego Comic-Con this year or maybe later in the year. We're probably going to get an official announcement about the Mutant movie and likely who the director is. They've probably been really focused on who the director of that movie will be. And man, Mutants will be the biggest thing that ever happened to the MCU. It's going to be massive and people are going to be really, really excited about it. So, you know, slow news day, ladies and gents. Slow news day. And so I wanted to talk about Mutants and the possibilities. So we'll shift into Q&A in a little bit. I'll go over the Super Chat, see what you guys are saying in DOS chat. Uh, and if you have any questions about anything that we talked about, feel free to bring it up uh, as we go over it. Uh, we'll also save a little bit of time for some Q&A. So we'll save a little bit of time for that as well. Now, is there anything uh, absolutely crazy going on out there in the nerdy world? I don't really think, uh, I think, uh, you know, pretty lighter on the news, yeah? Pretty light on the news. Yo, so I have, uh, as I said, I'm going to be doing a sort of thorough video on that uh, Harry Potter theory and possibility. So look for that later. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Um, but other than that, we're just kind of watching out for uh, what will happen. Oh my goodness, Grace just dropped another video about Doctor Strange and the latest rumors 34 minutes ago? What the hell? Doesn't she know I'm I'm live? How am I supposed to... Well, maybe I'll add that into my uh, the video I wanted to do, etc., etc. Mm. Yes. Mm, yes. Okay, one more thing before we get into uh, Q&A and all the Super Chats and all that. Uh... So, here's something that's kind of fun. The friggin' Batman is apparently three hours. Like, damn near three hours, without credits. And I know what a lot of you are gonna say. Because so many of you are Batman fans, and I get it, I love Batman as well. Many of you are gonna be like, yo, that's dope, that's awesome, man. Three hours of Batman, let's go! Nice, good for you, Adam. Publishing a novel. Let's go! Three hours of Batman, let's go! Bruh, I'm over here like... How am I not going to fall asleep in this movie? Like, for real, for real. Like, how am I not going to fall asleep in this movie? You know? And uh, apparently one of the... Uh, and it's just sort of... Um, what is it? It's a hearsay, rumor. Uh, but apparently the first two acts, very solid. And the last third, kind of, kind of not that solid. So, we'll see. And look, you guys know, yeah, I'm just playing around. I'm just playing around, okay? Like, I like to, I like to dog on the Batman movie. It's a meme at this point. But, I mean, let's just say, uh, I think they, they squeezed as much out of that movie as they possibly could because they know that we're getting at least six hours, about, of uh, Moon Knight content. And they were like, yo, let's juice it up. Let's juice it up. Juice up that Batman are we really about to watch three hours of emo Batman driving around looking for puzzle clues of the BDSM duct tape looking Riddler? Like, is that what we're doing? We're we doing three hours of that. I'm just I'm just asking. It's OK if we are. It's OK if we want a greatest hockey pad wearing shiny vampire, not in shape detective, you know, looking for clues for three hours. That's fine. It's cool. You know what I mean? But I mean, three hours? <laughs> now, it's going to be good. That'll be a really fun month, man. It's going to be very interesting to go see that movie and to check it out uh, and to see not only what am I, you know, what, what did I think of it? What did you guys think of it? What's the internet think of it? Uh, and then just one more sort of salty comment uh, about that just because I got to. Just because I got to. Uh, oh, all the DC fans and all the Snyder haters, they were like, 
Well, Zack Snyder's movies are too long, bro. His movies are just too long, bro. And then Matt Reeves says he's going to do three hours of farting, and everybody's like, you know, getting high on Matt Reeves farts for three hours. There's no consistency. What I'm saying is y'all don't make any sense. Oh, we don't like Zack Snyder because the shit's too dark and his movies are too long. But we're super hyped up for the hockey pad wearing brutality noir setting. Batman three hours and looking for BDSM clues. Shut your mouth. It doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway. Hey, can you guys do me a favor? When we go to stream on Monday again, can you guys remind me to do the... Just just remind me when we're early in the chat to just be like, hey, do the better version of the super chat looking at. Because there's actually a better way to do this, I think. But it, I have to like... Go, because it's YouTube and it's not efficient. I have to have this certain menu open so that it catches all the supers as we go through it so then i can like go into the supers and it looks all colorful and it's way better than what we're about to do just try to remind me uh earlier uh on monday stream if you would be so kind and uh also smash the like button what, what, what what's going on guys you know what i mean what, what, we got like 900 watching it we got, we got like, i don't even know how many likes guess what not enough you know how many likes we got not enough are you not entertained is that not why you are here? To watch me throw shade at the Batman? <clears throat> I'm just going to dance like this the whole rest of the time, dude. This is a new this is the new show. That's what we're doing now. Oh, all the likes are going down. Stop dancing. Oh shit. Oh shit, mate. Oh shit, mate. Hey, oh mate, shit, man. Shit, mate. Hey, mate. Oh shit, mate. Sh mate, matey, mate. Made a made a raid. Okay, look. You just have to deal with the funkiness of this screen. What I mean is the floating thing and the fact that I just you just got to deal with it until I can get this shit figured out, okay? Um, yeah, something's wrong with the green screen. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks very much for pointing that out. I had no idea that my actual useful green screen had fallen out of the ceiling yesterday. Thanks. Uh, Yeezy Fo Sheezy, member for 13 months. Oh, by the way, we are going to have a very exciting uh, stream uh, at 1 p.m. for the Nerdvenger Prime level. If you recall, real quick ADD segment here. If you recall, on the Prime streams, we've been talking about reaching out to some people, getting some objective criticism of the content. How do we get better? What am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? What, where are the holes in my game that I don't see? Well, we're going to talk about one in particular today that will probably shock you, but when I bring it up, you'll probably never be able to look at our videos the same way. Uh, we'll talk about that at 1 p.m. Okay, so let's start here. Care Chief Amp says, Jemiah the Analyzer creates mutants because that's one of his powers is to create mutations in people. Dude, that would be pretty interesting. I'm not super familiar with it. I think I've se I think I remember this character. But I could be, uh, just making shit up. Oh, the Eternal dude? <clears throat> I mean, it could be, bro. I, I don't, I don't really see them going that route. I know that there's precedence in the MCU for such things, but uh, I mean, look, it would be cool. But I think if they were to do that, they could have done it in, um, they could have done it in uh, Eternals. You know what I mean? Trev says you'll die in the first wave. Nothing to worry about. You'll die in the first wave. Nothing to worry about. Oh, of the zombie apocalypse. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. No worries. No worries. I won't have to shovel snow. Godard says, Do you think in future phases, 6 slash 7, it might even be mutant-centric storylines instead of Avengers focus? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I'm excited to see because I think this is, this is what I would do. I would do Secret Wars 
Then I would set up Avengers vs. X-Men. That's the next thing you got to set up. And I know some people are like, that feels really backwards. I mean, a little bit. But remember, the first Secret War happened way before Avengers vs. X-Men. Back in the 80s, just, you know, everybody on Battle World. Just, that's what I think is going to happen. I think you're going to be getting a multiversal setup to a multiversal war. You know, it's like one part uh, shooter. Uh, by the way, big video I'm working on for Secret Wars. But I'm still scripting this bugger. Like a 20 minute, like really in-depth video on like why I believe Secret Wars is coming. What I think they'll do, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but... I think they're going to do Secret Wars. Then I think you set up Avengers vs. X-Men. That's the play, bro. Like, that would be so hype. Josh, it's God. And no, Godard, it's Jimmy Neutron's dog. So triggered, says Dab Matt. Yo, Dab Matt. I ain't never watching Pickleball again, son. I ain't never doing it. No dinks for you. And uh, Godard. God. God, 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 I can't pronounce things, dude. Get off my back. All right, Dan Larkin says, The comic series ran until 1997. Secret Wars had X-Men 92. This is not all coincidence. I read a lot of stuff into this as well, man. You know? And they're also doing the 92 X-Men comic book kind of thing right now. Like, it's crazy. Like, you start to look look into this stuff, it really does feel like he's got this big plan for how all this could tie together. The multiverse allows for unlimited versions of mutants to exist out there. The question is, what are they going to do with our universe? What are they going to do with mutants in our universe, right? And maybe, uh, maybe there's something to that. Care Chief Amp says... Oh, like Krakoa. Yeah, let's talk about Krakoa for a second. In the current iteration of the X-Men world, there's a nation state of Krakoa where the mutants all exist, and it's a sovereign nation separate from the rest of humanity. And, uh, you know, there's a council, Xavier and Magneto help to, like, put it together. It's really, really crazy. Could they do something like that? Sure. But I still don't think that fully answers, like, where are the X-Men? Like, what is going on with the X-Men, right? So um, either they're around or they're not. But the Krakow thing is cool. And look, I love Hickman's stuff, so I do hope they pull some of that stuff from it. Maybe we see it in another universe or something, but uh, totally a possibility, man. Carl says for the $5 holla, Wanda finds out about Professor X hiding mutants. She is a Nexus mutant, brings in multiverse villains, and Doc Strange has to get help with mutants. Something like that could absolutely happen, Carl. If Wanda is a mutant and they hid that fact from her, yes, I think she would be upset by that. I think she'd have a right to be upset by that. But she's already going crazy just from Darkhold and her kids and all that sort of stuff. Could there be something to that? Could there be a thread established in Multiverse of Madness that opens that up? I really hope so, bro. Like, if if um, Magneto is really in this movie and he's having, like, a... Con like, dude, I would really like him to have a conversation with Wanda. And a conversation, a fatherly conversation with Wanda. I would personally really like that. Because, again, rumor, 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 the... Uh, what might be happening in the film is that the Wanda that fights the Illuminati is actually our Wanda that is possessing the Wanda of a different universe. And that Wanda in the other universe, we think, is very likely to be more like the comics. She is a mutant. She's the daughter of Magneto, et cetera, et cetera. So this would be really interesting because, like, again, rumor, 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 Professor Xavier may be trying to reach his Wanda that is possessed by our Wanda, and he's like, get out of here, and he has this connection to that Wanda. It's really interesting. So, I don't know, man. Carl, it's, it's a good thought. Something like that could absolutely be on the table, man. Magic in Big Creep with a $10 holla. Very generous, man. Thank you so much. Says, heard a cool theory that Fox's Wanda did the No More Mutants line, and that sent them into the MCU. Pietro was sent first because she was protecting him. Dude, that's wild. That would be very, very interesting. I don't know if that's going to be the case. It's, I mean, it's a really cool thought. It's playing around with a lot of the same ideas that we've been playing around with. So I like, I like the thought. There's a rumor that maybe Wanda will do something at the end of the movie that's like a reverse House of M. That she may well bring in mutants or establish mutants or, or stop them from hiding or something. That she might do some crazy spell like that at the end of the film. Um, so possible, bro. Very possible.
And I'm excited to see what they do. By the way, you know how we've been doing giveaways and stuff like that? Like, we've been doing uh, a lot of uh, uh, Book of Boba Fett stuff recently. And i got to go out uh, to get some more swag for the next couple of weeks to give away for you guys and stuff like that. But, uh, dude, oh my goodness. When the mutants start coming out, man. When we start getting it, like into mutant stuff, like, bruh. 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 Like, it's, oh, it's about to go down. Uh, Mike Snow says, Wanda permanently bringing together a universe with the mutants to keep their backstories complete or Xavier keeping mutants hidden. Seems good to me. Dude, for sure, they both kind of seem interesting, right? Like, on the one hand, and I really think this would be wild, like, if Wanda says, no more multiverse, and everything gets condensed and shrunk down, and there's all sorts of changes that happen, right? That would be crazy. It's sort of a House of M moment. But then it's like, is the MCU then from that period on living in a fake reality? Is it real? Like, I don't know. It's pretty fucking wild. It's weird. But on the other hand, if they've already been here and Xavier is, has them hidden, that's still really wild as well. And there's a lot of things they'd have to make sense of with that. Like, why aren't they showing up to help in different situations, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, maybe they are and people are just getting their memories wiped. That's wild. I kind of am leaning towards the Harry Potter thing. Like, that's kind of where I'm going i'm leaning in that direction but uh either way man we know they're coming and we know there's possibility so it's pretty crazy joey ebbs is spidey a mutant because the bite mutated his dna you know they actually go over this they discuss this a little bit in the uh x-men and spider-man cartoons from back in the day maybe we can watch some of those together sometime you know what i mean um but technically his dna does change but he's not, he wasn't born with the X gene. He's a, he is a mutant, technically, but he's not, like, manifesting an X gene. His mutation is, like, never going to stop, it is the way they sort of explain it. And I think they get it under control uh, eventually, but it's like, his mutation is different than a regular mutant that just has the X gene, right? Uh, so, pretty interesting. Kendall says uh after the pandy three hour movies in theaters are too much bruh i had the same feeling like for real for real now look don't get me wrong dr strange multiverse of madness dude i'd sit three hours for that shit but this is the batman bro like I, again i love batman but it's like asking the kid do you want to play with just this batman and and bdsm riddler toy for three hours no i want to play with all these other cool awesome toys yeah probably now i will say this they slip, but like, dude, if Matt Reeves has a fucking Superman in this movie, like, just even, like, you see him on the news or there's something like that or he comes, like, there's a lot of possibilities of crazy shit that we have no idea about, but I'm not even, like, doing videos about that or really getting excited about it because for all intents and purposes, it's probably just a Batman movie. It's probably just a detective Batman movie. That's fine. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, three hours in the theater, bro? I'll have to pee, like, three times. Uh, Water Cobra Gaming says, Josh, you said yesterday that your favorite pizza is DiCarlo's. That's my hometown pizza joint? Yeah, dude, Steubenville? Oh, dude, that's awesome, man. I Yeah, so I haven't been down there in quite some time. A lot of my family lives around that area. I actually live up north now, uh, out, of, out of Pittsburgh, uh, near Erie, PA. Um, but, yeah, man, Pittsburgh dude. Spent a lot of time down there. I, I love Pittsburgh and that area. Um, even in that West Virginia area, cool, man. Cool stuff over there. A lot of good memories. De Carlos pizza is awesome. I'm craving it to be honest with you. No, there's, there's a couple places around here that are like kind of similar, but, uh, nothing quite like De Carlos. Uh, Michael Phantom with a $5 holla says if they do mutants, right, then them going to be some hefty contracts. Actors will have to sign. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, you definitely want them around for some time. But I think uh, Secret Wars and multiverse type stuff, you know, because you can go back to Secret Wars. There, you know what I mean? There's nothing that says you can't revisit that concept even after a movie. But uh, you could do a thing where maybe you have them and then they soft reboot it and you bring in other people with the multiverse. So I don't know. It's almost like a whole other discussion, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I feel you, Michael. Thanks for the support, bro. Mike Motherflippin' Porter says the Batman rant is priceless. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Mike. 
You know, we just doing our thing up here. Hating on the Batman. <laughs> Look, everybody else is loving the Batman, okay? There needs to be at least some person on the internet, some content creator has to be out there being like, like, here's my stance on the Batman. You know? You got to throw a little spice into the world, you know? Max says, they better actually call the X-Men movies X-Men, not mutants or whatever. Don't get rid of the X-Men name. So those are, look, I, I knew this would come up, and I appreciate Mac bringing this up. I actually did mention to, to talk about this earlier. I, I meant to. So there's a there's a rumor out there that they're going basically woke with the X-Men stuff and that they don't want to have the X-Men name because it's not inclusive enough. Um, and to be honest, like, you know, if I'm being like super charitable and super steel man to that idea, that argument, sure. Is there some validity to that, some truth to it? Maybe. Here's the thing. I don't fucking care. I'm a big sweaty nerd. I love the X-Men. I've always loved the X-Men. The X-Men name, the title, the brand, all of it. It's fucking dope. And when, by the way, Mac, we already know they're not getting rid of it because they're making X-Men 97. Marvel is making that project, bro. It's officially announced by them. So they're not getting rid of it. Will they do something maybe way different with the X-Men? Sure. Sure. Uh, do they want to maybe focus on the mutant aspect of this whole thing and, and, and not have X-Men at the forefront? Maybe. I still don't think that's going to work because the X-Men is just, it's just such a good brand, dude. It's such a good brand. X-Men versus Avengers, like, come on, man. So, like, I, you know, regardless of how people feel about that, I, I won't be mad if they make a mutants movie. I still want the X-Men to exist. And I think they will. I mean, they're literally making the X-Men 97 stuff. So, uh, But I appreciate you, Mac. I appreciate you bringing that up. J. Mike Gaming says, will Larry Daly be a mutant, bro? Who the hell is Larry Daly? What, what, what the hell? What the hell's going on here? Oh, this guy? Hell nah, bro. You talking about that fake leak? The fake casting thingy? <laughs> Big Stevie said... My theory is that the first movie is called The Mutants because that's what the world will call them. At the end of the at the end, they will get the X-Men name moving forward. Well, the X-Men like first of all, Mutants and X-Men, uh, despite what Kevin Feige ass pulled in that interview, they're not the same thing. They're not synonymous. Mutants exist and there's a ton of mutants that aren't X-Men. Right? So the X-Men is a group, it's a team. You wouldn't even call the people all at Charles School X-Men. They're not, you know? And then there's like X-Force, you know, there's Excalibur, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, I, I'm not worried about that kind of shit in the slightest. Just being real with you. And uh, I don't think the mutants or calling the movie, like to me, really trying to make sense of that, I think they might call the movie The Mutants because of the Harry Potter angle. Because the idea is like, where the fucking mutants been? You know what I mean? For real, for real. And that will include the X-Men, right? Seconds from Disaster says, bro, the shot in the Moon Knight trailer where he's beating down that guy. That guy is actually werewolf. Werewolf by night, maybe. Um, Your cap locks were on, bro. Just so you know. Made me read that in a really weird inflection. So do better. Uh, secondly... I don't think it's a werewolf. It could be a werewolf, but it's more likely like a jackal. Like some kind of jackal, demon, god, Anubis type thing from uh, from Egyptian uh, from Egyptian stuff. But yeah, I mean, you know, Werewolf by Night is dope, and I think Werewolf by Night is, is coming along. Dan Larkin says, my member chat is part of that. Well, bro, that's what I'm saying. I can't see your member chat right here. You know, much love, but I can't see that shit right here. If you guys remind me to do better... Uh, Lazam 63, welcome to Nerdvengers Prime, 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 Prime. Welcome, Prime, Prime, Prime. Uh, but yeah, like, just remind me on Monday to do the, the better, uh, chat thing, but I gotta open it up. I gotta, I gotta open it up. 
Has the crypto dip mis- messed you up too, Josh? Uh, no, I actually sold out of like most of my positions uh, later in the year. I actually, I sold out of most of my stocks, to be honest with you too. I, I mean, I saw the writing on the wall, bro. Like this, it's a, it's, it's basically over. Uh, market probably going to zero. Money worthless. We're gonna have to sell our blood uh, to get. You know, shit going on and all that. So, you know, it's, it's probably the last stream, man. Zombie apocalypse. Like, um, everybody's, it's, it's done for. No, I mean, I'm holding on to some stuff, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I did move out of a lot of stuff. I, I'm kind of wait and see, you know. But a lot of folks believe that, like, what's going on right now kind of had to go on. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Beyonder with a five dollar holler says, "Josh, bro, just love you. Out of all the YouTubers I'm subscribed to, you're without question top tier. Keep it up, my guy. Hey, thanks, bro. I really appreciate that. I really do. You know, we're gonna keep it keep it going, man. A lot of fun stuff on the horizon. A lot of fun content. Our uh, all, our multiverse of madness videos have been killing it on the main channel, and I feel like I feel like that same sort of." Avengers Endgame kind of vibe, man, where people are hungry for the possibilities, the theories, and uh, we're going to ride a heavy wave of rumors and speculation right into that movie, and damn, dude, it's going to be great. And on top of that, there's a ton of other awesome nerdy content coming out there as well, so happy to have you here, man. Michael Greeno the second with a $5 holler says, is Nerd Card Showdown coming back? Just binge them. Disney show for life. Well, first of all, that's awesome. I'm glad you watched them. Uh, it's definitely coming back. I can't promise you when, and I can't promise you what version of it is coming back, but we love that show. Um, you know, I'd love to, to bring it back, and I know we will bring it back in some way, but uh, there's just some other stuff, uh, you know, in the pipeline and some other stuff we got to worry about. So, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. And if you haven't checked that out, guys, you should check that out. We have a pretty cool little trivia show we did. Uh, in the midst of the pandy. It was really fun. Rolling new with a $5. Says, hey, Josh, love the streams. Hype for Doctor Strange. Random. But who's your favorite obscure Star Wars character? EU background. Uh, thanks, brother. So, I mean, I like Dash Rendar. Dash Rendar is really cool. I actually like Kit Fisto a lot. For some strange reason. I just, I just think he's hilarious. Um... You know, Thrawn, but Thrawn's now canon, you know, and and pretty pretty much a big deal. I don't know. Is there any real obscure characters that I like in Star Wars like that? Not that I can really think of, man. You know, not that I can really think of. Probably say Dash Rendar. Kyle Katarn, too, but, you know. Uh, Michael Wright says, what if there's already a small amount of mutants, then the snap is what unlocks people's latent mutant gene, and then they start popping up all over. Michael, I actually meant to talk about this as well. That's sort of that in-between, right? There's there's two main things here, but really, like, the way I view that is that it still means they're not here. Because you wouldn't necessarily have a, a mutant issue. I can't imagine Xavier having the actual X-Men, maybe... But a lot of that, to me, feels predicated on the idea of a lot of mutants being out there. So it's technically possible. It's technically, you know, could be the the way that it is. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, brother. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, Sheev the Wise, $2 hala, says, over under 50% Olsen sisters are Wanda variants. Uh, under. But that's a cool idea, bro. That's a, that's a hella cool idea, man. Uh, Mike says, first VV drop in a while. Got the secret rare? Dude, what? Good for you, man. Good for you. I still don't have mine, I don't think. Let me see. Let me check and see if mine's delivered. One pending order. So I don't know what mine is yet. Good for you, brother. That's awesome. Oh, man. I'm so excited for mutants, dude. This is... Man. It's crazy. It's such a such a dope time to be uh, doing this nerdy stuff. Uh, do I think Fazbender will play Magneto again? I, I, dude, never say never with any of this stuff, bro. Like straight up, never say never with any of this stuff. 
Feige seems to be able to get these people to do things that they said they'd never do. Pause. Um, and so I think it's totally possible. I think one of the points I was trying to make earlier, and I probably just rolled past it a little bit too much, was like when it comes to the Netflix characters, it seems like Feige is able to recognize really great casting that maybe just didn't have great production. So he loves uh, Charlie Cox. He's putting Charlie Cox in fucking everything, right? He loves Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. He's bringing him back, putting him in a lot of stuff. Might even play a big role in the future uh, Spider-Man stories. So he's able to recognize this. Well, here's what the one crazy thing that the Fox X-Men did was actually perfectly cast Charles and Magneto twice. Not just once, but twice, dude. That's impressive shit. And if I'm Feige, like, I just recognize that, and I'm trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? I'm trying to figure it out. MCU Drew says, I am way behind on the stream. Not sure what you're talking about yet. Just let me know, Josh. I disagree. <gasps> you disagree? Now take my motherfucking money. Hey, thanks, Drew. And also, you wrong, bro. How dare you disagree? Uh, X them. <laughs> Low Live says, uh, yeah, I, I hope not. Uh, Quantum Entanglement says, you heard the news about the baby Josh. Oh, yo, heard the news about the baby Josh. So is that why you proposed to Elisa so quickly? LMO, LMAO makes sense now. I mean, you know, sort of. We ha already had, as fate would have it, we had already been having those discussions. And I already had, um, I already had some info on what kind of rings and whatnot she liked. Uh, and so we had already had those discussions, and I'll tell you this. This is the honest God answer. We very strongly feel and felt, even before uh, the kid, that we were absolutely going to get married. That was a big thing that we wanted to do uh, in the traditional sense, because I know like everybody has different beliefs about all this sort of stuff, right? But uh, I still believe it, fundamentally in a lot of... Um, Old school ideas, I guess, is the best way I can say it. Like uh, family, marriage, you know, these kind of commitments, th these kind of ideas. And so that's definitely something that we had talked about and we definitely wanted to do. But, you know, with the baby coming, absolutely, that accelerated uh, not just that decision, but a lot of other decisions. And so I'd say, uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little column A, a little column B. Um, but, yeah, no, it's uh, it's it, all of it is uh could be, to be completely honest with you all of it is a blessing and i wouldn't have had it any other way man you know like um i know some people plan things and some people have i mean we had different plans you know what i mean but uh life comes at you the way life comes at you and all of it is a blessing you know in my opinion zachary says do you think secret wars will start by fighting kang with aid from characters like doom and there will be opportunity for doom to gain power uh, first of all, Zachary, thank you for this question. Doom is a big question mark for me. How does he play into all of this? And I'll talk more about this in the um, in the big Secret Wars video that I'm doing. Because like, as I was working on the video about Council of Reeds, I talked about and I and I looked into uh, like that part in the Council of Reed Hickman. But which again, like I, I don't know why I didn't mention this in that video. Yeah, that's all Hickman X Men, dude. You know what I mean? Counselor Reed or Hickman Fantastic Four, rather. So in that storyline, they grab a Victor Von Doom and the, the homie basically lobotomizes him. Then he shows our Reed a, like a warehouse full of lobotomized Dr. Dooms. OK. And. Uh, I feel that Doom. Will still be a big part of Secret Wars. It's possible that Kang is sort of replacing him, right? So it's possible that Kang in the it is going to take center stage as the one that's sort of pulling all of this together. Maybe there'll be some kind of reveal with uh, Doom and he working together or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's a great question, man. I, I really don't know, but I hope Doom is, is involved and has like power, you know? Uh, Timothy Gregg, very generous, $20 holla, but no message. S strange, Timothy, but, you know, maybe put it into the chat. I'll get into the chat chat in a second here, and we'll see if we can uh, see if we can talk about it. See if we can talk about it. Uh, love some Kit Fisto or Dash dope characters. Thanks. Hey, thanks, thanks to you, man. Uh, Stevie says, mutants exist. X-Men don't. 
but will be formed at the end of the first movie. Otherwise, how do you explain the X-Men not helping against Thanos? That's fair. Totally fair. Totally fair, Stevie. I like I like where your head's at. Okay. So uh, I want to do a couple of call-ins. A couple of call-ins with peoples from the Discord community. If you are on the Discord and you are a Nerdvenger, you have access to the Nerdvenger-only parts of the Discord. And uh, we'll take a couple calls. We'll take three. We'll take the first three in. Let me uh, get it set up here. Boom. Call-ins. All right, so I just formulated the stage there, okay? So pop up. And then let me uh, pause that. Get this going on up here. And then go over here. And then let's see. Okay, so let's get Kendall in first. Then we'll do John White. Then we'll do Dark Dragon. Those are the first three in. Kendall. What's up, my friend? Yo, yo, yo. What's up? What's up? Not too much, man. How are you? I'm doing good, bro. How are you doing, my man? Good, man. Except for my sore and old back. Shoveling that snow was ridiculous. Hey, well, the snow down here got my side hurting. So you got your back. It's it's all in my side, Paul. Oh, but... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but yo, look, kind of wanted to touch on something. Look, yesterday I was talking about like my concern for Kenobi, right? Um, in the chat or what have you. Mm -hmm. Just kind of wanted to bring this out here. The reason why I'm concerned is that I feel like Star Wars is yet to kind of prove that they can continue on the story or bring on the story of a beloved character. Mm. So like when we look at things like Mando. Mando was awesome, but nobody had any expectations for Mando. Sure. When you look at things such as the Bad Batch, I mean, some people might have known about the Bad Batch, they had no expectations for it. But then you look at Book of Boba, it's the main gripe is like kind of what they're doing with Boba, along with some of the stuff in the show. Yeah. So my thing is like, that's why I'm concerned. Like, even with DC, like, DC can make a Peacemaker show and people can love it. Yeah. DC can make a Suicide Squad and people can, you know, enjoy it. But when it comes to making legacy characters and things that people have expectations for, they can't really seem to deliver like that. And I feel like it's the same thing with Star Wars. So when I would say I'm concerned about Kenobi, that's kind of where like people are people going to look at the decisions they make with him, as well as possibly like the actual content of the show. Could it, could it be out there? I still think it could be a good show, but my concern is really their track record and studios yeah. like their track record with legacy characters like that yeah you, you feel what i'm saying man? dude i absolutely feel what you're saying i'm gonna so i'm gonna take you out of here i'm gonna talk about yeah, take this me for, out, man. for a hot Please. second i appreciate you bro um so okay first of all great point by kendall you really need to be going to normies to nerds uh he has a lot of good takes and uh, i think he does good content so go check him out but this is such a uh, a great point because at least for me personally, I actually tend to forget about this aspect of uh, Disney Star Wars, where it is perfectly fair and true to say that they have not done a good job with almost any legacy type elements. Now, Rogue One is the one exception to that, right? And I heard somebody talking about this the other day where they said, I felt like Rogue One added to the story, you know, rather than tried to just continue it. And that that element of it made it really, really interesting, like the, the lore and sort of building off of that aspect. But it is true to say that for the most part, Star Wars currently under Disney has done a really bad job when it comes to playing off of pre-established things. Now, let's talk about this a little bit deeper because it actually speaks to the true problem of Star Wars as a brand. This is kind of big, you know, take a step back, you know, businessy kind of stuff. But let's just talk about this. Star Wars as a brand actually has this problem inherently baked into it. Star Wars is constantly fighting against trying to do something new and fresh and then also clinging to nostalgia. It's a really weird, interesting kind of a balance. And the fear, and I think the risk, is that if they get too far away from nostalgia, it becomes unrecognizable to a lot of older, you know, legacy fans, and it doesn't feel like Star Wars. But if they play it too close to the nostalgia, it feels like a repeat. It feels like it's just, you know, doing that thing. It's actually a problem that's inherent to the brand that makes Star Wars a particularly tough nut to crack when it comes to kenobi i actually this is a really good point that kendall brings up because i think 
you know, Theory has sort of been saying this over the past couple of weeks, and I think it's, you know, <laughs> maybe now I'm just kind of internalizing what it could mean and what it could lead to. But he says he's going to be like hypercritical, extra critical of uh, Kenobi because these are the characters that he loves the most, the ones that he knows the best at that time. What if, and I know Star Wars fans like can't even, some, some Star Wars fans can't even handle the possibility of this being discussed, but it is technically possible that the Kenobi show is taking some of the last two great nostalgic things from Star Wars and fucking them up. You know what I mean? Like, for real, for real, that is technically possible. So that concern rooted on the basis of this brand problem and the pattern that Lucasfilm has, their track record with doing so, I can't really blame Kendall for doing that. Now, my, my sort of little you know, hope here, a little inject a little hopium into the situation. Um, number one, this show was rewritten. This show was recreated and it was recreated under the guise of like John and Dave. And I believe even Kevin Feige is what I've heard like rumors of. But the idea is that, uh, maybe at one time the show was going to fuck it up and then they've gotten in there and they've tinkered a little bit and it's going to be a little bit better this time. Okay. So there's the possibility and hope of that. Number two, you got, uh, Deborah Chow, insanely talented, absolutely incredible. You've got uh, John and Dave hopefully helping out and overseeing there. So there's still a lot of hope that this would be the thing. But I think this is the one chance for them to sort of show that they can do this and they can do this correctly. I mean, Dave's done it a, a hell of a job handling legacy stuff in things like Rebels and Clone Wars and, and things like that. So uh, really appreciate that point. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm going to bring on Dark Dragon X7 to the, to the chat. Dark Dragon. I'm bringing you on, my friend. So hop on. Uh, I'll give you a couple more seconds here. You might be like doing laundry. Maybe taking a load out of the dryer or something. So I'll wait a little bit here. Uh, and then if we can't get you in here, I'll move on to Stormy. I'm going to move on to Stormy. All right, didn't work, didn't work. Uh, we'll have to catch you on the next one. Stormy, I'm bringing you on. Stormy, you're on you the know. call. What's up? Hello? Hello? What's up, my friend? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Josh. I hear you, man. What's on your mind? Yo, first of all, I just want to say congrats uh, on you and Elisa for having the baby. In a couple of months, I've, I haven't been here in a couple of weeks, so I missed it. Like, I just got to know it from the chat, like, a couple of hours earlier. To, I just got to know it from uh, the chats in the Discord a couple of days ago, so congrats yeah. on that, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, little baby nerd venture on the way. It's going to be pretty wild. It's going to be fun. So, what's on my mind today is, like, I have a question for you. Yes. With, like... Loki bringing in variants and, like, Spider-Man No Way Home having, like, Toby and Andrew being variants of the Tom Holland Spider-Man. So, do you think there's a chance when they bring in some of these, like, Fox X-Men into maybe, like, Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness, that that opens the possibility for some of the actors in those movies to come back in the main MCU universe playing the roles they played in the Fox universe, but like with a different spin on it, because like one of my things with the Fox universe always has been that almost every character in those movies has been perfectly cast, mm -hmm. but it's just like the story of the movies has been like super bad with some of them because like the X-Men and the mutants, they have some of the most iconic comic storylines in history like i can just name a few like days of future past yeah. dark phoenix yeah. apocalypse and like they fucked up they fucked up almost every one of them I know, some dude, of them it's, wild, right? and it's just stupid because like there's like one actor in those movies that i really like and i would love for him to come back and that is nicholas holt as uh hank mccoy yeah. i think his hank mccoy portrayal was fair was very good in those movies mm -hmm. the only problem that i had with the beast character was that he doesn't he, we i just didn't get the vibe of beasts from the comics from him like mm -hmm. in my opinion beast should be like the hulk of the x-men and yeah. it ju he just wasn't that so if he's a variant of that hank mccoy in the mcu they they can like better his story and his portrayal could be better. So, like, there are a couple of actors in those in that universe that I would love to come back. Is there 
is there like one character from those movies you would like to come back with the same actor? Yes, yeah, not that's not Wolverine or, or or Magneto. Yeah, absolutely, man. So I'll just I'll tell you on the call here, but then I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go, and I'll I'll sort of uh, talk about this for a second. Uh, I actually cool. like the dude that played uh, Cyclops, uh, Madison. Madison, I, I I forget his name or whatever, but I actually thought Madison, he was. Madison, I think. Yeah, yeah. I actually thought he was decent, man, and I I agree with you. But now I'm gonna get you out of here, and then I'm gonna I appreciate the the call. Cool, have a great t- day. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. So let me just sort of speak to this for a second. This is actually an idea that originally I did not think they would do. I really thought Feige would do a clean reboot, but especially, you know, sort of as Stormy said, like with the, um, with the Spider-Man thing, with Multiverse of Madness, with a lot of the variant stuff that they established in Loki, I think it's actually on the table that fans may well be able to just accept that these are new versions of the character. And like, you know, you look at the Kingman situation and like, it just... Maybe I'm getting it wrong, but like my understanding of that with Vincent D'Onofrio, like I don't agree with him. Like he's saying it's the exact same character. I don't think it is. I think it's a variant. I think it's our version of, uh, you know, Fisk that's maybe similar and maybe even had similar beats. I think what D'Onofrio is saying is that he's able to pull on all of the things that happened before with that character to inform the acting decisions that he makes. And in that sense, Maybe it is the same character, but canonically speaking, I don't think it is. When it comes to the uh, the X-Men in the MCU, I would actually love it if we did get a lot of them coming back. I don't know how everybody else feels about that, but like for me, I'd say do the younger cast, right? Do, you know, Pull off some of the best people that were in those last couple of uh, Fox X, X-Men films. That includes James McAvoy. I mean, I don't think it's going to include... Um, uh, what's the, what's Gal's name? That's, uh, Silver Lining Playbook, uh, Mystique, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. I don't think that's, I don't think she's coming back, but I think that many of these people would actually be open to it, bro. Like, I really think so. And I think it would actually be fantastic to bring them back, but then to establish them as the newer versions, as the MCU versions. So, I kind of think it's on the table, bro. Like, I I wouldn't be surprised if you had, like, a variant, and then we meet the one from our universe, and it happens to be James McAvoy. You know what I mean? I don't think you're doing uh, Patrick Stewart, but it could be McAvoy, bro, and I think that would actually be pretty, pretty cool. So uh, I appreciate that. RF Gaming, I'm bringing you on. And then that'll be, uh, that'll be the last call in today. We got a couple more Super Chats to get into, and then we'll get on out of here. Hey, what's up, brother? What is up, my friend? How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, as everyone, I want to uh, congratulate you and Elisa. Exciting news. Uh, I believe you said uh, uh, July yeah. expectation. Yeah, yeah, around July. Yeah. Uh, I got a bunch of family, friends, so many July birthdays. Aim for July 11th. Swear to God, I get those six people with the 11th as a birthday. We'll aim for it. I'm aiming it up. <laughs> uh, there's a few things I want to touch on. I know you're rushed for time, so I'll, I'll hit them real quick. Cool. I'm down with you totally for uh, the whole, like the mutants have been there the whole time in hiding. One of the biggest things for me is uh, the battle in New York, which throughout the phases, they keep on touching on it. They touch on it in, on Hawkeye. And I just want to see this huge sweeping scene where like professor X drops his, his, uh, his uh, spell or whatever on, on the whole world. And like you see, uh, like it drop, and you see the beans where they're fighting the, with them the whole time. Yeah, like that Chitari force was far too big for six Avengers. Yeah. Um, and and then the other thing I want to touch on was the uh, you you talked about the the Marvel bankruptcy earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, you know those were crazy times. I remember it really well. Uh, Spider Man. Like the the movie rights were held up for like 15 years from late 80s. Five different production companies had claims on it as crazy times. But there's this really cool book I think you'll enjoy. It's called Comic Wars. It's all about Marvel's bankruptcy. It's kind of dry. Like there's a whole lot of court proceedings and stuff. Yeah. But it's I know you you got a, a really clear business mind and it's a lot of business stuff in there. It's like when Carl Icahn was trying to take it over and oh, some crazy wow. stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, check I'm it out it up right now. Yeah, no, that sounds dope, man. So, uh, I'm, thanks, thanks again for the call and thanks for that recommendation. I'm gonna uh, get you out of here and I'll talk about this for a little bit, okay? Thanks. All right, cool. 
So that's such a good point. And I'm going to end this uh, call-in situation here, guys. We'll do more call-ins next week uh, as per usual as we do. But uh, I actually really like that idea when it comes to the uh, Battle of New York because the Battle of New York is pretty substantial. It's, a, it's kind of a big friggin' deal uh, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I'd actually really dig it. If, like, they were there and the mutants just had everybody forget about it, like, it would be pretty wild, but they've technically done retcons similar. Like, if you look at what they did with Mysterio, like, he's just there, he's working for Stark, you know, they could tie that in there. And I think it actually would make sense. So I'm all for that, and I think that would be a, a, a really, really interesting... I mean, like, how crazy would that be to see a new version of the Battle of New York with the mutants doing stuff? You know what I mean? And what if even at that point, it's already been decided that they're going to try to help stealthily or work? You know what I mean? And you just see like Nightcrawler like bamfing here and there, you know, and people like don't quite know what it is. Um, there's obviously other reasons that maybe they didn't come, uh, you know, during the Battle of New York. I mean, th it's possible there was something else going on or they were looking into other ways to try to help and stop. Uh, what they suspected was going on at that time. I mean, that's technically possible. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like that idea. Like, I'm, I'm down, man. Like, recontextualize away, bro. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, yeah, I'm down. Uh, and then I got a couple more super chats here. I just want to read before we uh, get on out of here. Get that call in logo out of there. And I appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, RG2888 says, not sure if this has been said yet, but what if we find out in the future Wanda already got rid of the mutants and that's why we haven't seen them? Yeah, so some people do think that's what's going on, that Wanda got rid of them. I don't know. I actually think maybe Kang getting rid of them is more on the table. Like maybe the TVA stopped mutants from getting to where they were at for some reason. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, similar ideas. Brian Bartling says, Xavier's ability to locate mutants in the Fox movies crosses over to the MCU and the multiverse of madness. I don't know, just a thought. I think it's possible multiversal version of Cerebro. Let's go. That's sick. Jensen Baker says, oh, by the way, it looks like the Moon Knight cupcake boxes don't say Von Doom, just the shop name. It was nice to wonder about it, though. Yeah, I saw that, actually. Um, and I actually saw, I saw that pop up and Eric Voss was talking about it and I made a comment and I meant it to be lighthearted, but I think some people took it the wrong way where I'm like, yeah, this is coming from the guy that spent a day looking for Nova in Endgame because the Russo brothers trolled us, you know, like it's fine to look at fun stuff and overanalyze stuff. I was just saying like, you know, it's, it's funny to me. That's all. Uh, but yeah, the 80s Claremont run works perfect. Mutants evolve into X-Men. Xavier uh, intro as mutant expert. Magneto's an activist. Terrorist act X-Men formed. Uh, Avengers vs. X-Men. Trial of Magneto. Bob's your uncle. Mutants is prelude. I agree. Mutants is prelude to what's to come. 100%. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what stuff he pulls from, what stuff they end up working with. Who's going to be the director? What's the vision? It's a lot of fun possibilities for sure, man. Elijah says Luke sees helping Boba defend Tatooine as training opportunity for Grogu. There's no way that's true, Elijah. I absolutely love it, but that would be the dopest shit ever. Like if Luke just literally comes in and says, well, I thought this would be good training for my new Padawan. And little Grogu rolls out with two green sabers and he's like, meh, 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 meh. like, dude, let's get it. And then him just flipping around, stabbing the pikes in the face. I'm here for it, Elijah. Absolutely love it. It'll never happen. Elijah follows up and says, hear me out. Luke and Ahsoka fall in love. We get a few seasons of that, like at least five. Come on. We all love her. And then Ben kills her. The devastation of her death, maybe. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. Luke, so are you telling me that Luke Soka is about to make sense of Luke in the sequels? I'm here for it. Let's go. I'm sure that the fan base will react unanimously positively about that. I'm sure that uh, the Star Wars fans would... would would find that to be uh well fan freaking tastic i would say you know that's just let me just throw that out there we'll we'll everyone will everybody will love it inject some hopium shall not be forgotten <laughs> yeah man uh that's a phrase used often in uh financial circles and video game circles where they're talking about hopium and 
stuff, copium and stuff like that. Jensen Baker says, does anyone remember the lady that Sam asked to find Ant-Man? She mentioned a bunch of powers. Maybe that could be turned into a connection to the X-Men. Absolutely could be. Absolutely could be. Again, the big question, are they here already? Are they not here already? What's the deal with the X-Man? All right. So we're about to get out of here. I do want to just hang out in the chat chat for a little bit. See what y'all be saying. In the chat. Oh, it's way behind. Anybody hit a 99 or 100? Anybody hit a 99 or 100 yet? I bet 40k Nerdcoin Kersantin shows up in Kenobi. Damn, Sozu. Ugh. I'm not quite ready to open up bets and stuff like that, but eventually, maybe. Eventually, maybe we will. <gasps> Willem, nice. William Obi Will Kenobi Warrington hit a 99 or 100. My man, Josh rigged the gambling. Uh, no, 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 James, 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 James. It's not rigging gambling. To have a house advantage. Most games have a house advantage. So it's not rigging it. What do you want me to do? You type gamble and you win? That ain't gambling. Come on, man. Use your brain. Besides, everybody's about to lose all their nerd coin anyway, so gamble away. As soon as that yellow uh, and silver Naboo N1 cruiser rolls up, mm, 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 mm. I got the delete button ready. Boop, 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 boop. But then we can start it up again. Then we can start it up again. I'll give some nerd coin to people and we'll start to build it up slowly and all that, you know? Eh, 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 eh. No, I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. Mutants don't come in Doctor Strange 2, then win. I don't see when they would come in a soft reboot in Secret Wars. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. I think they're coming. Uh, I think that, like I said, I think the, the perfect scene for me is Doctor Strange rolling up to Xavier's school at the in a post credit scene after Multiverse of Madness. And him being like, Charles Xavier, Dr. Stephen Strange, we need to talk about the mutants. Boom, and we're out, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think Secret Wars will come further down the road. It'll be bigger than Endgame. It takes a massive amount of story building to get up to. If anything, I think the next Avengers movie will be Kang. It's possible. It's possible. I feel that Kang and Secret Wars are going to align. That's what I think. But who knows for sure. The mutants have hidden from humans for centuries. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, okay, guys. So I think I'm going to get on out of here. Much love to you all. Oh, my God. We went pretty long today, didn't we? Uh, so stream at 1 p.m. Business tier stream. I'm going to talk about some of the mistakes that I've been making uh, when it comes to content and some of the stuff we're working on behind the scenes. Um, then... Got some juicy videos coming out. X-Men video, an extensive like about the Harry Potter thing. Um, maybe Secret Wars video. Be watching the news to see if anything crazy pops up. Next week, of course, we've got a book of Boba Set Fett episode five. It's going to be dope. Better be. Um, and uh, lots of fun stuff to come as always. Uh, much love to you guys. Thank you so much for another great week of streaming here at the Den of Nerds Live. As I always say, I hope you are having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you in the next video.
Is everybody gone? Did everybody leave? Man, oh man. Kendall got me nervous, man. I started thinking about what he was saying. I was like, damn. Kenobi better not fuck it up. That is gonna. That's uh, that's gonna be a thing. Man. That's gonna be a whole thing. Got a ton of fun podcasts on the way for you guys. I'm actually gonna probably in the next. Four or five days record like four or five podcasts so i know we've had a little slow uh, start at the beginning of the year with this but uh man we've got some juicy ones on the way a lot of fun stuff to get into man much love to you all as i always say and uh just one for the road real quick <laughs> I know you think that's a horn solo, but that's just my farts. I'm, 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 I'm really good at that.